Welcome back, everybody. Episode 63 of The Harsh Review. This is an entertainment podcast. Uh, you are joined with Sean and Ryan. We are two brothers who are so hot for each other. We're doing number 63 with nothing but socks on. How you doing, Ryan? Uh, I'm good. I just took the socks off. Oh, no. Whoa. Hold yeah. on. That was supposed to be the it's finale. Oh. <laughs> uh, What's new and exciting, man? How you been? I've been all right. Yeah? Uh, enjoy, enjoying some time off work. It's raining out. So we've been getting a lot of rain in California, which is nice. Yeah, it's kind of rare, right? But, yeah, but it seems like we're never ready for it because, uh, you know, stuff sure. is flooded out. The freeways are a mess. So people tend to drive like, you know, 10 to 15 miles per hour slower in the rain. And also, you know, it doesn't seem like they're doing much. Yeah, I hear you. So, uh, good judgment. So it's kind of dangerous out there. Right on. Well, yeah, it's but, um, it's well, snow apocalypse has ended up here in the Northwest. The rain has come, and uh, things are now starting to look normal again. So, there's that. Nice. Yeah. Glad you're okay. Hey, thanks, man. Yep. Really means a lot. Snowbound with Sean Harsh. Well, I'm excited for this episode because we're going to be talking about the movie slash documentary free solo. Um, but before we get there, I'm curious, you got any news stories? Yeah, I got a couple. All right. Um, Let's do it. You know, we we know that uh, Netflix has pulled some uh, of the superhero or like Marvel series. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, kind of grabbing them, uh, grabbing something up is uh, Hulu. So the other day, Hulu and Marvel TV announced uh, four new adult animated Marvel series. So we got some new uh, superhero uh, you know, series coming. We have uh, these are they're called. I only one of them that I know. Marvel's M period, O period, D period, O period, K period. Marvel's <laughs> Mo, uh, Modoc. I guess that's what it is. I don't know yeah, what it stands go for. Yeah, that direction. <laughs> okay. Marvel's Hit Monkey. Marvel's Tigra and Dazzler show. And Marvel's Howard the Duck. Yeah, the, the four. Yeah, the four series will culminate in a special titled Marvel's The Offenders. So uh, a quick little rundown on each of them. Modoc centers are on an egomaniacal supervillain with a really big head and a really little body. He struggles to maintain control of his ego organization and his demanded family. Sounds like it's about Napoleon. And uh, we got Patton Oswalt's a writer on this one. So, Okay. Um, yeah. Marvel's hit monkey tells this tale of a wronged Japanese snow monkey. Sounds so made by up. The ghost. <laughs> Mentored, mentored by the, I'm, I'm just making these up right now, actually, <laughs> just pulling it out. Uh, mentored by the ghost of an American assassin as he cuts a wide swath through the Tokyo underworld in this darkly cinematic and brutally funny revenge saga. Mm, okay. Marvel's Tigra and Dazzler show is a story about two woke, woke quotes, superheroes and best friends <laughs> uh, as, they, as they fight for recognition among powered people who make up the 8 million stories in Los Angeles. Finally, uh, uh, Howard the Duck, trapped in a world he ever made. We are we hope you remember this. Uh, apparently, Kevin Smith is a writer on this, so we'll see how that one goes. Uh, return home with the help of his unstoppable gal pal Beverly before the evil Doctor Bong can turn him on, uh, turn him the crispiest dish on the menu. And then the offenders brings them all together, much like the other you know, the show on uh, Netflix. I forgot the name of it. Defenders. All right. Well, so, you know, this is like a new partnership. Uh, yeah, it's it like their C tier, you know what I mean? It's not their yeah. franchise um, characters or, or shows. But, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Kind of kind of random. But, I mean, everyone's know. freaking out because the Disney Plus is supposed to come out, I think, in the fall this year. And it's going to really cannibalize a lot of, a lot of stuff from... Netflix and Hulu, but I think a little competition is good. And so I'm just kind of curious to see, you know, it's staying power and which ones it'll get. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, you never know though. I mean, they could be pulled tomorrow. Yeah. Who knows? All right, cool. That's what it is. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, What else you got? Yeah, of course we got it chapter two coming and uh, much like Avengers. It's almost three hours long. 
mean, what do you expect? The book's about 1,500 pages. So, sure. You know, it wrapped up filming last fall. Uh, they're starting to put it together. Uh, with this, something like this, I don't mind because I'm a big fan of the book and I think Stephen King's a great writer. And I, Is and this I really, uh, getting like released it. this year? Yes, it's coming out this fall. This fall. Okay. Um, yeah. So they said, uh, it chapter two is almost three hours long, pretty good, but it needs work. The first is better. All I'm saying is at least WB sue me into an early grave. That's what some guy said who works in the film. Hmm. Um, again, it's like an anonymous source. So, you know how it goes. It may not end up that way, but, um, pretty cool cast. Uh, you got James McAvoy as Bill. Bill Hader is Richie. Um, a couple other guys I haven't heard of, but. Should be fine. And then Bill Skarsgård returns to play Pennywise. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to that. Exciting. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm there. Need an update from that horrible TV show that does not hold up. Yeah, but you said it still has a place in your heart, so don't lie. It's a place, a place in my heart, but very mildly. Um, We have a new documentary about Chris Cornell. It's on the way. Um, the film will be produced by his widow, Vicky, along with, uh, Brad Pitt and Peter Berg's, uh, production company. Um, is that plan as B? yet unt- untitled, uh, film 45 production company. Okay. That's what it's called. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty exciting. That's just pretty much all we're That'd getting. Be nice to one. see. Just, yeah. You know, not really, uh, like a whole, I mean, I know of his musical work, of course, but it'd be nice to know like his background and, you know where he came from and kind of how he lived his life. Very uh, tragic tale. Sure. So anyway, that's all I got for news. Oh, let's close the chapter on news. Hey, Hey, close it. Well, um, I burned through and watched uh, homecoming on Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. I thought it was good. Um, like it was kind of yeah. like what we talked about before. We mentioned it a few times, and then I know we had a request to talk about it again. And, and you know, anyway, so I went through and watched it all. Ten episodes are about you know thirty minutes a piece, so it's kind of a quick watch. Yeah. Um, pretty small cast: Julia Roberts, Nucky Thompson's brother, and then the <laughs> uh, um, main <laughs> Italian guy from Boardwalk. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> the guy looks like choked out with a belt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> You, they're all great hey. in it. Um, oh yeah, it was an interesting story. You know, yeah. Do you um, think it's going to lead like, to another season? It could, or, or there could be like a similar kind of spinoff. You know, like more conspiracy stuff. You kind of picked up on the sh- on the Hitchcock stuff. I told you, right? Just kind of that's kind of what it, like halfway through it kind of started reminding me of like a classic suspense film. Um, yeah, I could I could see some of that. Yeah, which I kind of liked it. Um, how it just kind of cut back and forth between stuff, but um, well, I mean, it, it's a, and they played a little bit with like the camera, so you kind of knew, you know, it was like a three four aspect ratio, something I never really seen. Done. Yeah, like um, I got it was like when they did uh when they did the present day, like the screen got really narrow. Yeah, yeah, I, was like I thought something was wrong with my view. TV. <laughs> like I was like, what's going on here? It's like I thought something was wrong with my TV. I like restarted my uh my Apple TV, and I was oh. like. And then it started up again. I'm like, no, I guess that's part of the show. <laughs> yeah, like ten it's minutes part of the later. Show. Feel like I mean, idiot. for those who haven't seen it on, um, it's on. I saw it on Amazon, but is it an Amazon or HBO? It's an Amazon. It's an Amazon. Okay, and yeah. um, you know, it follows Julia Roberts, pretty woman who uh, is like a therapist at a rehab center for vets, run by a private company that essentially drugs the uh soldiers to help them with therapy and does tests and all that kind of stuff but it flips from her time at this institution to um modern era and kind of tells a story between those two so you kind of start picking up what's going on rather quickly because it does move fast paced you could watch the whole thing in like you know less than six hours um, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a good watch. If somebody's looking for something fast and simple that you really need to commit too heavy to, uh, check it out. Homecoming. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I'm trying to see if the, uh, would like to listen to the podcast. Eventually I wonder if there's extra stuff in there. It's pretty good. Adaptation. Well, I think the podcast, if I remember what I read, cause it was based off of the podcast, 
two seasons of the podcast where you know that they kind of brought some elements from season two into season one because I guess it translated to better TV. Um, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see. I think it's a little bit more of a slower pace on the podcast, but either way, it was right. very curious to see what they do there. Right. Yeah. Nice. Glad you checked that out. Yeah. What about you? You watch anything this week? Yeah, I saw um, same on Amazon a uh, documentary. It's actually a PBS documentary called uh, "Rumble: The Indians Who Rock the World." Um, I thought okay. it was really good. It was so uh, you don't like that title? <laughs> it doesn't really tell me a whole lot. Well, it's about uh, Native Americans and their role in music, uh, especially like rock and okay. blues. So um, I learned a lot like from this. It's a really good documentary. Um, near the end, it, it kind of got into some people I didn't really care for too much. But, um, you know, it talks about like Native Americans and their role in emerging music. So it starts with uh, this guy, Link Ray, who was one of the first guys to do like, you know, power chords and kind of sustained feedback and rock. Um, you had Robbie Robertson from the band who played with Dylan. And, you know, they got to change a lot in the late 60s. Jimi Hendrix, of course, um, this guy, Jesse Ed Davis, who was a blues player, um, all kinds of, you know, people, old uh, Charlie Patton, who was an old, like, blues singer. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, very, like, educational. I learned quite a bit about how this is an interesting fact, I guess, like, when European settlers first came over, one thing they did was um, they took, you know, just to kind of get rid of the native american population was they they rounded up a lot of the males and they sent them to africa and then they brought the slaves over to um you know settle in america um of course you know in captivity but apparently like the slaves and then the native american women who were left they ended up having children so you know they said that at some point after 1850 that the majority of um, african slaves were um native american blood in them as well Mm -hmm. um so it's interesting how like it, it kind of talked about that crossroads between the blues and then Native American chants and spirituals, and they sound like very similar to each other. So they kind of inform each other, which is really cool. Um, but a lot of good footage. Um, you know, a whole bunch of people are interviewed. Um, saw Slash talk for the first time. Like I've never seen that guy talk. Um, oh, uh, Saul so Hudson. It's, it's kind of. Yeah, Saul Hudson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know who. Yeah, really cool though. I, I I really liked it. It was um quite enjoyable. Um, yeah, check it out if you nice. want like a good uh, mu- music documentary. Yeah, and informative. Yeah, so check that out. Um, what else did I watch? Uh, another one called Massacre at the Stadium. This is a uh, one of the ongoing, um, like backstory. Um, uh, Netflix is doing like every month. They're doing a different like mini documentary on a musician, but they place them in like a, some kind of like historical context. Okay. I guess you could say. So this one's on a, a gentleman I never knew about, uh, Victor Hara, who I guess um, they were saying he was kind of like the Bob Dylan meets Martin Luther King Jr. of uh, Chile. So um, when he was singing in, uh, in the country of Chile, there was like a lot of uprisings going on with the communists. And then, Um, the Americans, of course, were sending in their people to take care of everything. And this guy, um, ended up being like killed and massacred with a lot of other uh, political dissenters. Um, so it was kind of like, it was really interesting. Like, cause first of all, it's nothing, I knew nothing about this guy. Um, so I found it pretty fascinating, but also there's kind of like this investigation on who actually killed the guy and then like why, and then, you know, kind of, kind of like a censorship that makes you really appreciate that we have freedom of speech in some, some kind of form here in America. Um, so I thought that was really good. You should check it out. It's a good series so far. They've done some really cool ones. Hmm. That does yeah. sound interesting. Yeah. Oh, look check at you, man. Out. You're getting your education on this week. Tearing it up. Uh, and then I, uh, dialed it back a little bit and started watching this, uh, other show on Netflix called Russian doll. Um, yeah, I watched one episode of that. Yeah, that was kind of like uh, Groundhog Groundhog's Day, Day <laughs> with, with like with drugs. Like, yeah, you know, I don't I know. It, it didn't. I think it's pretty. You know, what do you think? Funny, you like but it's. I like it. Um, like she's pretty good in it. Um, Natasha Leone, she's like like pretty good physical comedian. 
Um, it's with her and it's co-written with her and uh, Amy Poehler. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like a six or eight episode runs and they're not too long. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's good, but it's like, Hey, Groundhog's day again, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Once I kind of right. got the bit, I was like, well, none of these characters really yeah. interest me. So yeah, it's, eh. it's really like New York centric, um, you know, partying and living the life and, whatever so it's interesting i think groundhog day is a good movie as you know just on its own because it's and a lot of people love it it's kind of metaphorical for like how mundane a lot of people think their lives are you know just kind sure. of like the routine of everything makes you think you're living the same thing over and over but the truth is you can you can kind of look inside of it and you know change things on your own and how many course. how many episodes you watch I'm in like three, I think. I'm, is it always so part of well the party just, still? Is is that does she get out of the party or she does like at some point like she'll wake up and then but then like she'll just something will happen to her and she dies again and then she goes back to the party. Okay. Um you know, so it's kinda like but then it's kinda like she's she's starting to figure out what's going on or you know, she's she's kinda doing her own little investigations on uh you know what's causing her this you know whether yeah. it's like the drugs or whatever so it's it's funny um i don't see it becoming like a multiple season series or anything but, mm. you know that's fair yeah yeah check it out cool yeah all right and then we watched uh you told me to watch something yeah and, you want to uh, get into it first i yeah i thought it was a star wars uh thing no 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 let's I get like, it let's get into it yeah Okay, so the feature movie that we want to talk about this week is called Free Solo, and it is not a Star Wars movie. It's not a documentary about <laughs> liberating Han Solo from uh, you know, <laughs> Kylo Ren. Um, he's in carb. Well, he's in carbonite. You gotta, you gotta get him yeah. out of that. So, so it's like it comes before Return of the Jedi. There you go. It's like a little, yeah, little bumper there. Um, yeah. It's a film that goes. Uh, that's about the rock climber Alex Honnold um, and his quest to perform a free solo climb of El Capitan in June of 2017. Um, El Capitan is like the largest piece of granite, solid piece in the world. It's probably the most iconic, cool rock that you'd yeah. see. Think of like a, it's in Yosemite. And if you see that normal Yosemite Vista where you got half dome in the middle and then the waterfalls to the right, El Capitan is that giant, slab of rock on the left um yeah and i've known I mean, about this prior whole... yeah prior to this i just thought it was a macintosh operating system I yeah there know. you go look at look That's at you. what it was called <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so i've known a lot about this i've known a lot about this climber for a while but i didn't really know if ryan did or not and then, so i watched this movie um yeah. and then i was like well th- i think this is great so tell me ryan what was your well you know, first impressions and what did you know about it up. going into it like I had like uh rock climbing in me, like have you, what, what's your experience with rock climbing, Sean? Um, I've made, I've done some rock climbing a few times, um, on ropes, but, uh, yeah. most of it would be like bouldering. You know, that's just where you're running on top of big rocks, like in okay. Joshua tree and at and the yeah. Sierras and different things. And, you know, growing up in the cabin when we were kids, you'd go climbing on rocks and stuff, but nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing like this shit. Oh, well, I, like my experience. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Like the thing with the rock climbing in me was I do like the boulder hop stuff at uh, Joshua Tree. I've done that before. About 15, maybe 15 years ago, like I went on a first date with somebody and they were like, um, yeah, let's I'm like, what do you want to do? And then it's like, uh, let's go to a rock climbing wall. And like so, a gym? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, but they had like they had like a bar and stuff. So that's a great I combo. basically yeah why well, not for me like i basically proceeded to like embarrass myself on these rocks i mean it's really hard dude <laughs> yeah um i made a total like pussy of myself like let me down it, it proved, let me down it. Well, not, it, it wasn't the heights it was like just the first of all when you're doing this, out of like, gas or arms <laughs> yeah like it, like my forearms were killing me dude like um and she was just jamming up these walls and i'm like all right um shortly after this date the uh the the correspondence just kind of faded away to nothing. Um, <laughs> you know, like well, you're since that, you know, yeah, it's like, you can't climb a rock wall. <laughs> like I don't want, that's, that's on my list of, uh, you know, 
preferable qualities in a man. Um, so yeah, but that being said, it's not like a great trauma or anything, but going into this movie, I'm like, well, I don't know if this will be interesting or not, but I will check it out because Sean recommended it. And then by, you know, by golly, it, I really like this movie. <laughs> by um, golly. <laughs> by golly. Like, yeah, see? <laughs> the, uh, the last, she, I mean, the last like 30 minutes probably created like severe anxiety for me. <laughs> um, Seriously. Much like what I mean, and I've seen like clips and I get the similar feeling when I see clips of people like balancing on the edges of like buildings or climbing yeah. up on those like that stuff just freaks the hell out. You know, and it's like, you know, they're going to be OK because otherwise it would be like some snuff film. Um, <laughs> but but so, you know, like like, you know, they're going to be fine. But um, the footage in this film was was amazing. Yeah, um, it was. It was this incredible. guy. Yeah, like this guy, dude, is just something else. He's um, out of his mind. He's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. just to kind of profile it a little bit, you know, um, Alex Honnold is a you know professional climber. And you wouldn't think that people make money from climbing stuff, but he does because of sponsorships and talks and tours. Um, you know, the... the the brands and products he endorses, books that he's written. Um, he was born, he's like, what, uh, 34 years old? Um, yeah, you he know, looks pretty young. Yeah, he's 34. I think he did it when he was 32, 33 years old, you know, and um, his first, you know, um, notoriety came where, like, you know, one of the things is he holds the fastest ascent of the Yosemite Triple Crown, which is basically an 18 hour, 50 minute link up of, um, you know, the Mount Watkins, the nose and the regular Northwest face of half dome. Um, and these are just big ass rocks out there. Um, yeah, he's an interesting kind of guy. They go into his backstory and all that kind of stuff. And so they kind of profile the person, you know, that he's doing this. Um, what I found him is he was just very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. and had a kind of a relatable background in some ways, but it's, it's really weird to see how somebody like him can be as simple as he does and then do something so crazy. That's just hard to fathom how somebody has the, the stones to do what he does. It's like, it's almost to me, I was like saying it's, it feels like it's almost more impressive than like landing somebody on the moon. Um, yeah, that somebody, that one person can do this. Um, the girlfriend like was starting to kind of annoy me um, just because of, of how she was, you know, like she kind of knew going in what this guy was into and then kind of started to like, try to well, change him. Huh? Yeah. And then it's they're kind of being selfish. And it's like, and I mean, he said early in the film and I'm sure like, you know, she wasn't know he said this. He's like, well, he's like, I put a, I put solo climbing over a relationship with a woman, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, she didn't really understand like his, I mean, when people are passionate about like art or, something where that is thrust their whole being into it's like everything else just kind of goes by the wayside. And some people are just so focused and passionate. And this is an example right here. This guy was so into this thing that, you know, he couldn't really explain why he did it. It's just something that he loved to do. And I, I think it was just where he achieved like his inner Zen or whatever. Um, and so she was just like, well, you need to put me in the equation, you know, or meet me halfway or, you know, it's like, I mean, the guy is so into it that it's just, that's what he is, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't think she was going to change him or anything, even though she might have thought that. But, um, well, and he, he's like a guy that, you know, to profile him a little bit more, um, you know, according to the Alpinist um, in the 2011, which I guess is a climbing magazine, um, it's a quote, in the mind of the climbing world, Honold emerged from the goo fully formed in 2006. Nobody had heard of him. In 2007, he free soloed Yosemite's Astro Man and the Rostrum in a day. So I guess, you know, uh, matching Peter Croft's legendary 1987 feet. And suddenly Honold was pretty well known. A year later, he free soloed the 1200 foot um, finger crack that splits Zion's moonlight buttress. The ascent was reported on April 1st. And for days, people thought that, that the news was a joke. Um, five months afterwards, he took the unprecedented step of free soloing the 2,000 foot um, regular northwest face of Half Dome. 
and they said this was this climb was the most impressive ropeless ascent ever done. And so, you know, free soloing is when you climb mountains with no ropes. And not less than one percent of all climbers do it. So it's a, for the crazy of the crazy. And this is an industry where lots of people die. Like if you're a free soloist, you will die. And Mm -hmm. he knows lots of people who've died. And his point of view on that is like, well, if it happens, it happens. It is what it is. He doesn't really have like an ounce of fear or concern. Um, And he's been alone most of his life because people can't really be with somebody like that. Um, And he also knows that the closer you get to people, it might put doubt in your head because then you have something else to live for. Therefore, you're not really in the mental position to go and do something that if you make a single mistake, you're dead. Um, you know, and so the, 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 you know, like he was sponsored by cliff bar at one point and in 2014, they said that they could no longer sponsor him. Um, mm. because they concluded that these forms of sport are pushing boundaries and taking the element of risk to a place where we as a company are no longer willing to go. And so yeah, they just, that's reasonable. They weren't comfortable with it. Um, and you know, so this movie kind of leads up to him climbing El Capitan, which is 2,900 foot, um, free rider route. It's a route that, you know, every rock has got different routes, just like freeways in Los Angeles. There's different paths Mm -hmm. to the top. Some are more difficult than others and not all of them can be done free solo. Only certain paths are capable of being done solo. But most of the time when you're rock climbing, you're, you're strapped in. And let's say you climb up 20 feet or whatever. Um, the first part is usually free solo until you get to an anchor point. Then you attach your anchor to that. And then you climb up again. And then you get to another anchor point and you attach to that. So every every time along the way, you're anchoring higher and higher up the wall. So if you fall, you usually are going to fall until the, the last anchor point you set, which usually most people fall. It's like a 20 or 30 foot fall until it catches them. Um, and they said they traced the history of this. Like when the first people that climbed it, this is it, it took them a couple months because they were like gradually going up it and like drilling these yeah uh, spikes into the wall. So I mean, you know, um, interesting. Like the evolution. Um, this thing is gnarly, though. It's like just looking at it, you would be like, "There's no way." It's yeah, um, it's intimidating as hell. Yeah. Um, and and so it's crazy is that. You know, this is something he's been wanting to do for nine years, but he said he was just too afraid. He could never really do it. I mean, this is a guy that lives in a van. He's lived in this van for like over a decade. Down by the river. And yeah. so this is a big quote that he said that I'll, I'll read here. It's a little long, but it kind of really helps profile the mindset of this guy. And so he said about van life was, quote, I don't think van life is particularly appealing It's not like I love living in a car, but I love living in all these places. I love being in Yosemite. I love basically wherever the weather is good. I love being able to follow good conditions all over and be relatively comfortable as I do it. And so that pretty much necessitates living in a car. If I could, like, miraculously teleport a house from place to place, I'd prefer to live in a nice, comfortable home. Though, honestly, the van is kind of nice. I like having everything within arm's reach. Uh, When I stay in a hotel room, like, sometimes you have to get up you know, get put up in these really classy hotel rooms. It's really big and you have to walk quite a ways to the bathroom. And you're just like, man, I wish I had my pee bottle. Who wants to walk all the way to the bathroom in the middle of the night when you can just lean over and grab your bottle and go. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it, that's just kind of what his mentality is. I mean, he, he's a vegetarian. He doesn't drink alcohol, caffeine, or use drugs. So according to him, quote, basically I'm Mormon except for the God thing. You know, um, yeah. And so he, he's just a really quirky, interesting dude where he's got like that look behind his eyes. Like there's just nothing there. You know what I mean? That's like all those guys, they look like really kind of like skinny. Yeah. You know, did you notice that? Like kind of the common. Yeah. Like, but all the guys that do this kind of thing, they all look, they all have that look like that hundred yard stare and, and they all have, you know yeah, what I mean? Like they all, stare, they all, right? they all look like Vincent D'Onofrio in a full metal jacket before he shoots that dude. Um, <laughs> you know, and they, and they all like, they all look kind of like they could use a hamburger or something, you know? Yeah. Um, but he's ripped. Like there's like, 
He is, but it's like their like their faces just look like kind of weathered. I don't know what uh-huh. it is. It just I mean, but I guess that's part of the lankiness. But yeah, he was doing like like serious. Yeah, and you have to like going back to my story. It's like you got to have that forearm strength, and they're, he's doing like the pull ups and stuff, and. So it's like total conditioning, total discipline. Um, I really admire it. You know, that's something I don't think I can ever get to that intensity of focus. They take it to a whole other level where it's like, this is the ultimate risk. Um, Even like his, even his contemporaries and people that, you know, they also chronicled how many people have passed, you know, doing this kind of thing, not on this particular um, uh, feat, but in other ones, just how many people have died from doing stuff like this which doesn't seem to deter him. He's just like, well, that happens. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't, you can't really get caught up in it, which is understandable. Well, and it's interesting because I, I, I thought the whole movie was going to be about him climbing El Capitan and it, it didn't. And I think it really kind of helped add the gravity and weight to it. It's like, it's a, it's a good build yeah. up. Um, Cause you know, yeah. you know, he succeeds, you know, he does it, but they still manage to add tension and drama to the weight of the decision because you're seeing it unfold. And so just to give you guys some, some examples is he's um, there's a part where he finally, it kind of gets a nerve and he's got this big crew around him of maybe like, a, you know, eight or nine guys that are all expert climbers with themselves, but they're, you know, some are on the ground, some are up top, some are doing drone work. Some are, are laying down the rocks and posting up to like stay out of his way so they don't distract him. And so he's really concerned, like if he can even focus with all these people filming, filming him. Um, and so it's like, they're all on standby and they don't really know if he's going to do it or not. They're like, I don't know. I think, I think he's going to try it this morning and he won't even like tell his, his girlfriend or anything. He's like very vague about it. Like you can tell he's like getting in the headspace to kind of go like, okay, I'm about to do some crazy shit. (laughs) <laughs> and so it's really tense, like seeing like his gears turn and how like he's psyching himself up to do it, but he doesn't really, he's not like an emotive kind of guy. He's really calm and collected, you know? Um, and then, so finally he gives it a go and you had to leave at like 4am in the morning. And yeah. so he gets up and then his, um, your girlfriend's like, what are you doing? You know, why up so early? He's like, Oh, we're going to go climb. And he just says it. And he's like, oh, he's going to go try it. Cause he doesn't want to, have all this weight, like, Oh, if I fall, I'm dead. And I mean, he gets up, um, four or 500 feet and then he just calls it. He's like, yeah, I can't, I I can't do this, you know? Yeah. And so he's just hanging on the side of this rock until they can rope him in and get him off. Um, and so that goes by and he's super bummed. They leave. And then like the following year, is like when he kind of goes back and he's like thinking like, okay, the weather and the conditions are right. I'm going to make another push. So he's doing more practice runs and testing it and figuring out like his, what path he's going to take. Um, yeah. And there's like this one area where he can go up, like, I think they call it like the glass shelf. And, you know, he explains like, they do a great job of like explaining to the, un, the, the people who don't know rock climbing. Um, uninitiated. Yeah. Uninitiated. Like what it takes to climb this part. He goes, or I can go more left right. and I have to cross like the something bridge or whatever the hell it's called. And that's where you have to do like this leap of faith. You either like jump off and then midair and then grab another ledge or you hang on and then you have to put your left leg out and then just like fall forward. And then your left leg needs to connect with the other rock so you can go over some big crack. And, you know, him practicing it with ropes, he was not that good at it. Uh, but that was probably the safest route that he would go. And so that's like the biggest moment to where it's like, okay, this is like a make or break it part on this wall. It's really difficult. Right. Um, and so it, yeah, it eventually leads up to him wanting to try it. And he just, it's interesting. Like they're just following him walking and he walks to the wall and there's not even a second hesitation. And he just starts climbing up the thing. Dude. And, and he is jamming up this wall. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's hauling ass up it, and yeah. people are like, "How far is he?" And he's like, "Oh, he's there." And they're like, "Oh, he's going real fast," you know. So I love uh, I love when he gets to the like a part of a shelf, and there's like a dude camping there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's wearing like a he comes out of a tent and like a bunny rabbit costume. Yeah, it's like some like furry is camping on the side of the, yeah. the cliff, and and 
they don't they're not getting like close ups obviously, but, but he, he doesn't have like a GoPro on him, but they, they see it from a distance and Alex is like, Well, how you doing? See you later. <laughs> it just yeah. like keeps going, you know. And they're like, That like must a, have been like weird, sh- like yeah, rock climbing it's pretty up pretty surreal. You know, and then camping and some guy just comes walking by you and you're like, What the fuck? Yeah. You know, no one's yeah. ever done that before. No. Um, but the footage I mean, this film is so beautiful. Like the footage is yeah. incredible. I couldn't believe how yeah. good of footage they got. Um, um I really wish I would really, like, seen IMAX. Parts that are close up, like I think there's one part where he sees one of the guys and they kind of acknowledge each other. Like yeah. I think after he got you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's looking he at told cameras him, smiling a couple times, but like Yeah, you know, not but too he much. He told him too, like, I don't want a camera right on the top looking down. Like I don't I, like it's kind of in his line of sight. I mean it's understandable. Well, he it's meant like, he didn't want a camera up top because right. he's all if I fall, you're gonna get the whole thing. And he's like, and right. nobody needs to see that. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, he knows that, like, yeah, these points of views, um, you know, there's a really good chance I'm going to die. So if he falls, you'll most most likely see him fall out of frame. But, I mean, I felt for the, the cameraman that was on the ground that had to keep the camera on the whole time. <laughs> like, he couldn't got, even got, watch. That like, was great. That's how I felt. I'm yeah, like, yeah, like, dude. I'm, I'm, it's It's so, it's like, it creates extreme anxiety because... It's like, how is he doing that? Um, it was, I mean, it was amazing just to see him like doing that. And in, in this, I mean, you wouldn't want like a point of view, but it's like the shots they got, they put it together so well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, w- I would have loved to see it in IMAX too. Yeah. Um, and this, this the climb. I mean, not everything else, but you know, not the whiny girlfriend, but like just the climb would have been sweet. Sure, um, sure. It's it's so amazing and it looks so. I've I've never been there, so I I know you've been there, but it's like I'd love to go. Yeah, you got to go. It's one of the most beautiful places list. on earth. Yeah. Um, you just got to plan ahead. Maybe get a campsite or you know spend a little extra money and and stay at the lodge. Um, right. And it's it's an awesome place. But the you know El Capitan's huge. I mean, he climbed this thing in less than four hours. Like I can't even go down two flights of stairs without needing a break. You know. Yeah. Um. And so not only is he like in like tip top shape and that's, he said that's where he gets a lot of his confidence from. Um, but it, it's the, you know, it's just his approach and the way he goes about it. And when you see him get to these like really difficult parts and it's like really tense and you can see him like really focusing. I mean, he's on his toes and his fingertips hanging off the side of this rock. that's like practically Dude. vertical, you know, it's, <sighs> And it's and like doing like like kind of doing these little like side kicks and stuff to get to where he needs to go. So it's you know it's not like a lot of people would just like you said earlier. It's it's not like a straight up. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you have to you have to figure out this particular path. And I guess there were a couple different ones. And he just you know you just figure it out. And you know it's like following a map, but it's in his head. I mean, he's not stopping to do anything else. Um, man, yeah, it's cool. So and so he yeah, he yeah. makes it to the top. And he's he's pretty pumped about it, you know, and he's getting his high fives and he's doing his whole thing. Um, and then like immediately afterwards, he's like, oh, I'm just going to do some finger exercises and work out in his how, van. You know, how the other guys get up there? Like, did they was there a trail behind it or something? You can, or? Yeah, you can hike to from behind. So like okay. imagine like a mountain going up a hill and then it just stops. And then the whole face of that mountain is vertical and exposed. So okay. it's the big chunk of granite that's the you know the Yosemite Valley was split you know millions and millions of years ago from like volcanic activity and earthquakes right. and stuff. So like um, Half Dome, if I'm remembering this correctly, you know Half Dome's got that sheer face. At one point in time, I think it was part of the same rock of El Capitan, and then the two split apart, and then they moved you know miles apart basically. Um, hmm. and so that's why it's a 3000 foot face. Like it's the biggest thing you can climb, you know, um, not necessarily the most difficult in the world because there's, you know, there are really difficult routes and, and paths on it. Um, yeah, but it is one of the more impressive ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, it kind of wraps it up and it's like, well, who knows what's next for him? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's going to be doing this stuff forever. I mean, but you never know. It's like, it's who he is. And he said, yeah. you know, he might consider not doing it in the future if something were to come up. But 
I mean, he has like a nonprofit, which I think it was cool. And, you know, so he seems to, and he goes and speaks and, you know, the groups of people. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and he actually looked it up. Uh, he has a podcast on Rogan. He did recently. So I haven't listened to it yet. I didn't have time today. Oh, somewhat recent. But, um, yeah, it's like, um, I have it right here. It's 1189 on Joe Rogan. Oh, uh, what, what, yeah. when, what, what month did he uh, do it? So at 1189, it was, looked like it was uh, just a couple months ago, November. Mm, I think I may have listened to it. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking I might've again. missed it or something, but yeah. Um, but that would be interesting to, just to kind of hear him speak about it after the fact. And yeah, cause this didn't take place too long ago. So yeah, that's true. You know, pretty fascinating kid though. Um, you know, how, how he talked about, got into his family a little bit, talked about how he's kind of like his dad, you know, his dad died at a pretty young age when he was young and um, didn't really feel a lot of love in his family. So, you know, that kind of just, he was a very singular person, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, very kind of keyed into himself, but definitely dr- driven, you know, something innate inside of them just kind of drives them to do these things. And it's, it is admirable. It's like, you can apply that same intensity to anything really. And not saying go to climb up a wall without a rope, but you know, sure. I mean, I don't, they didn't what say you how do his and, dad you know, died, did they? No, they didn't get into that. I'm not sure what, what, what it was. I know his dad was, had Asperger's. Um, yeah. You know, which, you know, may have, uh, impacted you know how his personality is i don't know yeah i mean i know it's something like that isn't uh i mean now it's that's not the term it's basically it's because it's called a spectrum yeah and so it's like anywhere on the spectrum but i you know i don't believe that it's i mean no one really knows the cause of autism or if it's even genetic so it's kind of interesting but that would definitely impact a family of um, someone was, you know, had that, had those symptoms and was in a family, but interesting. I mean, Oh, he died of a heart attack. Affected him. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was looking it up too. You got it faster than me. I'll look. Yeah. All right. Well, so check it out. I mean, it just came out on iTunes. I mean, it's like 10 bucks. I think it's worth it. Um, or yeah, you can I mean, wait I, a couple weeks. I was weeks. figuring I support them, you know, and. Just drop the ten bucks is pretty good, you know. Oh, but for if, sure. Check it out if you have a nice TV. It definitely looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, even if you're not into rock climbing and it doesn't sound exciting, it's really worth seeing. You know, just one of the rare like feats of strength and what humans are capable of. I mean, I I knew what I was going to expect going into it, and at the same time, it was like incredibly entertaining. Um, just because there's not a lot of stuff like that out there. I mean. No. Is there any other documentary or something that like captures something of this, this, you know, uh, this type of level of um, achievement? I, I wouldn't say so much achievement, but one that this reminded me of a little bit, not, it's Into not the even void. the same thing really. Yeah. Like, Touching the void. Is Touching that what it's the called? Void. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was like, and basically the movie's like a recreation of what happened. Yeah. Uh, which I think is cool. I mean, but that's kind of, I, I kind of wanted to go and watch that one again. Cause I hadn't seen it in a while, but, Stuff like I mean, I, I like those stories, like those, those survival kind of like type hum- things. Yeah, human will and, and just kind of like overcoming like incredible odds, especially like man against nature and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really like that kind of stuff, and so yeah. this was something diff- different. That I was glad it was out there, and yeah, National Geographic always does quality shit. So it's pretty cool because, um, you know, we may have never seen any of this stuff if he died. You know, and, yeah. and, and so that the fact that he was able to do something like this, be Probably successful, YouTube. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I don't even want to leak the YouTube, you know, the light of day snuff films. Yeah. It would have just deleted been on it. A faces of death or something. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> like, fake. Come on. Like, it doesn't even yeah. exist anymore. I mean, does it? <laughs> I'm sure in some death. form it has to, uh, uh, faces of death and made in America. Yeah. Those are two, two things that traumatized me as a kid. Thanks. Yeah. VHS uh, black market tapes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't think of anything though. Like, it's not even yeah. like outdoorsy, you know, like just in general, like, um, 
you know, these Alive. kinds of achievement. Like, I mean, yeah, people land on the moon <laughs> is something similar where you see it like, yeah, they could die any second now. Like, that's got the same kind of weight. Um, yeah. But I think the difference for me is that's more of like um, an achievement of mankind where lots of people came together and were able to do something. Yeah. Totally impressive. Human ingenuity. This stuff is so primal. It's just like, whoa. It's this like, is just a dude you know, climbing nothing. something, you know, but it's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. It feels so naked. Like there's just no backup plan. There's no hope because I think right. the way they described it is one of the guys in the show said, imagine the, like the most difficult thing in the Olympics and you have to do it perfectly to get a gold medal. And it, it's like every little thing you do has to be 100% perfect. And if you do it, you get the gold medal. But if you make even the slightest mistake, you die. And that's yeah. what this is, this is like. So for three hours and almost almost four hours of climbing this 3,000-foot thing, every little thing you do on your fingertips and your toes and how you scale it has to be 100% perfect. And the slightest mistake, and it's over. And yeah. so that's just dead. really rare to see somebody at that level able to just lock in and they do like what they're just born to do and they do it really well. Um, it's, it's just always cool seeing that. So anyways, you should guys should check it out free solo support it. It's a, uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I got anxiety now just thinking about it. Yeah. I'm going to go watch some, uh, cliffhanging videos. <laughs> yeah. Let's go put some Muppets on and balance. That was out. Uh, another, that's one I should have recommended. Um, a cliffhanger by Sylvester Stallone. If you like uh, free solo, <laughs> go watch uh, Cliffhanger. Yeah, any movie where someone's sliding down a mountain face and they have yeah. to like grip their ice axe into the ground to stop them from uh-huh. doing it, like that's a solid movie. Yeah, Cliffhanger. <laughs> Isn't that where there's like hit. the the helicopter and he has like slides off the mountain? And he's like flies to the yeah. helicopter and like you know, yeah, just the most ridiculous shit ever. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, well. All right. Well, yeah. uh, hey, I had fun. Yeah, that was a good one. What's next? That's a great question. You um, know, I got I got a, a rental looking at me right now, uh, which you should probably watch by next week. Uh, what is it? Mean Rhapsody. I've seen that. I've seen it. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that next week then, because I want to check that out tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, um, I'm just tired of people asking me to watch it, so I'm like, all right. Yeah, we've heard about that. Let's just, yeah. <laughs> let's just uh, bite the bullet. Check this out. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of new stuff that's going to be, yeah. you know, hitting, you know, being released. There's some things kind of coming out, but it's it's kind of quiet time of year for movies. I mean, you're picking up on some rentals and things made available, you know, that came out in Q4 2018. Um, but for yeah. the most part, it, it's it's that slow time of year. Um, so we'll try and, I did we'll watch, try and uh, string it together. Sisters Brothers today as well. Okay, so we can talk about that. Yeah, so you should check that out. It's, I liked it. It was pretty good. Yeah, Sisters Brothers. Yep. All right, cool. Good actors in that one. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for uh, episode 63 about uh, Free Solo, not Han Solo. Uh, free Solo Climbing. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed the episode and it's your first time here, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you enjoyed it, leave a review. Uh, we really appreciate it. And you can check us out over at Facebook forward slash the harsh review h-a-r-s-c-h review and you can follow us there over on facebook um you know join in on the discussion make some suggestions for things you want your favorite brothers ryan and sean to discuss and we will be back week back next week episode 64 sisters brothers and much much more uh yes. that's gonna do it for us my name is sean i'm ryan 